Inflation has been a persistent challenge in Nigeria, eroding the purchasing power of the Naira and making it increasingly difficult for investors to preserve the value of their portfolios. As such, understanding effective strategies to hedge against inflation is crucial for navigating the Nigerian financial landscape. Well, in this interview, we will explore the intricacies of inflation hedging in Nigeria, focusing on the unique macroeconomic environment and the investment opportunities available. Magrela Uluwashiung, Head Investment Management and Research, STL Asset Management, joins me for this. Thank you, Magrela, for joining me today. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Patricia. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice being on the show this morning. All right, let me begin by asking you what you make of the new inflation figure. I mean, it has decreased. Uh, well, for me, yeah, it has decreased potentially, uh, coming from 34.19% uh, just last month to 33.40%, so that was released yesterday. Uh, food inflation also decreased a bit marginally. Uh, it's now at 39%. But far and wide, the most uh, impacting uh, the most impacting indicators or the most impacting activities of inflation still remain. I feel to a large extent, uh, year on year, I think it's more around the base effect. So we've been having higher inflation numbers. So when you compare it to present inflation numbers on a year on year comparison, we are beginning to see a bit of decline. But most of the issues still uh, persist in security logistics issue, high cost of transportation and the likes, and farmers are not really able to go to their farms to farm. So I will be seeing more around uh, a year-on-year -year base effect. We'll be seeing lower inflation numbers, but the real uh, the issues uh, still persist, and which is left to the government to tackle. Right. Uh, I think we should just move on from there. Give us an overview of the impact of inflation, exchange rate fluctuations, and also monetary policy decisions mm -hmm. on investment returns in Nigeria as we speak. Ah, that is a very, very difficult question. But let's take it from this angle. So you can take it from two angles, from the business side and from the investment side of things. Now, starting from the business side, I, I as a person, I will not want to be in the shoes of any entrepreneur, or any business owner, or any institution at this moment now, because if you look at it, uh, the exchange rate is about 1,600 naira to the dollar. Now, Nigeria being an import-dependent economy, which means if I want to source for my raw materials, I need to pay more. I need to pay 1,600 to get a dollar and I'll be that, which means I'll be importing less raw materials. Now coming into space, inflation at 33.40%, it means I need to produce as fast as possible so I can sell and not increase price at 33% to be able to cover up for my purchasing of my raw materials at 33%. Now, there are some things you can control, there are some, some things you can control. NPR at 26.75% means that no matter how friendly the bank is, you would borrow money as, as high as 35-40%. Now, if your bank is friendly to you, they can come as low as 30%. Now, what business would you do to get returns higher than 30%? So you can see the whole mismatch is really squeezed on business owners and uh, on entrepreneurs. And looking at it also, uh, there are things, there are sides you can control. The external side you can't control. You can't control. We've seen household wallet being squeezed, high tariff costs, high tax, I mean, multiple taxes. So a lot of uh, households are limited with respect to what their purchasing power. Inflation on their side is impacting them. So how the businessman would manage this whole mismatch of uh, negative uh, activities in the economy is, is really, really dear. Now, on the investment side of things, we are seeing rates tickle up. Uh, we've seen one-year uh, NTB rates uh, point, I mean, uh, peg at 21.89 percent which is really good but far and wide or fair and good uh we've not really seen returns above inflation we've not really seen real returns most of the returns we are seeing are nominal returns 21 22 percent and it's also really impacting the investment side of things uh which would also mean that people have to take advantage of some structural type of investment to be able to earn uh, real returns on their uh, investment portfolios so what are the structural types of investment you're talking about? Do you mind talking to us about them, whether they are equities or fixed income markets, you know, and how investors can sort of navigate this? So uh, traditionally for equities, equities have known to be uh, inflation and the type of inflation of investment. Uh, equities over the years have 
power outperform our inflation numbers are coming from a very high number. I think the equities market returned 50.03% in 2020. For the past four years, the equities market has been positive. Even last year, the market did 45.9%, which is quite high uh, comparing it to inflation numbers. So equities traditionally have been known to be an uh, inflation edge type of investment. Also, we go into commodities more around the metal side of things. Gold, silver have known to be quite uh, defensive when it comes to protecting your investments uh, against the inflation. Aside from that, you can also take advantage of real estate. Real estate over the years has been known, though it's very liquid, but it has been known to be a strong hedge against uh, inflation. And a lot of uh, investors who are trying to seek or find a sort of protection against inflation take advantage of those number of those uh, type of investments asset classes. Uh, also, digital assets. But I don't want to go too much into deeply into digital assets. Then for fixed income, we have the Treasury Inflation Protected uh, Instrument that also is benchmarked against inflation and also helps uh, investors to protect their investments uh, against uh, inflation or inflationary pressure. Right. I mean, I'm talking about maybe a newcomer mm -hmm. who's probably wants to, who is listening to you and wants to start investing. I mean, what, what would you say to that person really about making choices between all the things you've mentioned? Okay, for a newcomer, for a newcomer, I would say, first and foremost, always have a long-term view when it comes to investing. Because uh, if you have a long-term view, the short-term volatility won't really impact you that much. Because in the long term, you definitely tend to make more money when you're investing. Then secondly, don't go all out alone. Seek financial advice from your uh, financial, uh, from financial from finance professionals. Don't try to think you can game the market or you are smart uh, to hedge against the market, try to seek financial advice from stockbrokers, from your investment bankers and the likes. Also, diversification is key. We usually tell investors, especially starters, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, diversification could be across asset classes, across industry, across even currencies. And uh, diversification helps smoothing your return in terms of it increases the potential for your risk-adjusted return on your uh, investment portfolios. So you have to correlate a portfolio where you have assets that are not directly correlated. So for example, you can invest in equities and bonds. They are known not to be correlated. The year where bonds are doing quite fine, you find that equity is not doing all right. And the years where equities are quite outperforming, you find the fixed income market or the bond side of things not doing so well. So you try to correlate your portfolios to ensure that you, you sort of hedge your downside and you smoothing out your returns for a longer period of time. So seek financial advice, then do regular portfolio reviews. Don't just invest and go to sleep always review always review your portfolios and in terms and this advice your professional uh, advice you try to make uh, best uh, options for yourself when it comes to investing all right do you I think, think the current answers. okay do you think the current bank offers in the stock market offer juicy opportunities for investors yes definitely yeah uh, for investors trying to take a long-term positioning and also for investors who want to take tradition i mean strategic holdings in the various bank i think it's a very good opportunity to take advantage of but i don't want to give specific uh, market sensitive information so i'll just say seek professional advice from your stock brokers from your investment bankers okay i know and, you do not want to take give market specific information things. Yes, but you can you can give us tips. You know, you can talk about okay, these are the things you need to look for, look out for when we talk about fundamentals. These are the things we mean. This is, I mean, whether it's the PE ratio or whatever. I mean, you can tell us some of those tips. We're not saying tell us the name of the of the stock. Okay, so for banks, traditionally, uh, the, looking at the PE ratio, comparing to other industries for banks, Nigeria's PE ratio is quite low at the moment. Uh, so it's a very good opportunity for you to take advantage of. Then you can also take advantage of rights issue because uh, traditionally rights issue come at a discount to whatever is trading at the market. So rather than buy the stocks high at the market uh, levels, you can buy at a discount because you already, you already have share holding. Though it will cap you in terms of the ratio of your holdings, what you can get in the rights uh, issuance. Then you look at banks that have potential for growth in terms of optic. What are they doing strategically? Banks that are well diversified. Uh, I well, specifically let me call it, some banks have holding structure already, and they have other companies. So it means that no matter what, they are not. Uh, I will put it now. They are not solely aligned on the banking business. They make income from different. Uh, those are banks uh, that are highly. Uh, for me, they are, they are the top ticks for me to take advantage of. So holding structure. What are the board of directors doing? Uh, what are their forward-looking uh, guidance in terms of PE ratio? And uh, right issue, right issue is also a very good opportunity because you buy at a discount to the market price. I think oh, I'll okay. just leave it at that.
Talking about rights issue, I mean, now what you see is that the secondary market is even cheaper than what is being offered. But that's story for another day. How do you assess the potential of traditional inflation hedges like real estate, gold and commodities in the Nigerian market? Let's close with that. Uh, yeah, so for inflation, like I've spoken before, there are some traditional assets that are inflation hedge, uh, like commodities, I've said the metal side of commodities. And for those who are very savvy, the uh, oil and uh, uh, the oil side of uh, commodities also, they are known to uh, be a strong hedge against inflation. Uh, real estate, equities, uh, inflation protected uh, fixed income instruments, uh, those are the traditional instruments. Now, do you take advantage? We have the gold ETF. For those who want exposure to gold, who don't want to really take exposure directly to buying gold, you can take advantage by investing in a gold ETF. Uh, the, uh, the, we have various gold ETFs being traded on the NGX. And also for those who want to take advantage of real estate, who don't want direct exposure, maybe due to the cost, you can take advantage of real estate uh, investment trusts. Uh, there are a lot of REITs in the markets that are quite doing very positive, uh, turning uh, very good returns. And take advantage of that and overall if you want to take direct exposure you're also good because rental yield have known to increase uh, over the period we've seen rental yield go as, as high as 10 to 12 percent uh, per annum then for equities like i said uh so far so good the ngx has returned yet to date about 29 percent uh, yeah. we expectations are that the market will close uh positive for the year uh, looking at the drivers the bank recapitalization exercise we've seen a lot of banking on in respect to dividend payments and the oil and gas space too is also doing pretty much fine on the back of the subsidy removal and uh, it's a bit of backward integration okay. we see a lot of oil and gas industries are uh, buying uh, uh, new assets across uh, the various oil mining licenses uh, in the country. Okay. So there the are opportunities. Even All in right. the year where it's okay. so well. Well. I know there's a lot to talk about, but we do not have the time. Thank you so much for your time on the show today. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you very much. All it's right. nice again.